So, I have been going, I spent four days in rural South Carolina, and four days North Carolina, and four days in rural Georgia. And I just spent a day going around western Pennsylvania. And I'm going to be in, I think we're doing five stops here in Michigan today. And when, when Vice President Harris called Hillary and me, and they've known each other for 30 years, but I've only known her for a few years. But she called me and I, she said, I want you to help. And I said, I'll be low maintenance. I don't care if I'm ever on television. <laughs> Because what I think former presidents are best for is going places where presidents don't show up all that often and sending a message to people that everyone deserves to be heard and that whoever it is they're trying to help is making sure that they're heard. And so I said, I, you know, so I like this. And I, I, and, but I do want to say that I decided to do this for only one reason. I don't want anything. I don't want an appointment. I don't want, <laughs> you know what I want? I want to assure the American dream for my grandchildren. I don't want my 10-year-old granddaughter to have fewer freedoms than her 44-year-old mother. Can you believe Chelsea's 44? And about to run in her third New York marathon. So I want that. And I remember, I know this is in a place where there are a lot of members of the other party here, and I hope there are some Republicans here today. But I was with former Congressman Joe Walsh from Illinois yesterday, a Republican who's campaigning for Kamala Harris. And I was... And I was reminded of the difference in Donald Trump's roots and Joe Walsh or even Lynn Cheney. Trump's father hired as his political organizer or guru, Roy Cohn, who was Senator Joe McCarthy's main advisor. And Roy Cohn was an interesting fellow. He was Jewish and he was gay, both of which are fine with me. But Roy Cohn ran campaigns against Jews and gay people. He was an anti-Semitic homophobe who was Jewish and gay. And, but he had one constant message. Whatever they charge you with, deny it. Deny everything. And always accuse other people of doing what you're doing. Does that sound familiar? So... Uh, I don't know about his time in business school, but Donald Trump proved to be a good student of Roy Cohn. <laughs> Deny everything. Never admit error, ever. And accuse other people of doing what you're doing. And do it with energy and sanctimony.
President Ford, when he was in Congress, and even before, was more of an acolyte of President Eisenhower, who finally figured out how to maneuver Joe McCarthy to his demise without wrecking the coalition that was his party. And when I was a schoolboy, we were all taught that Eisenhower the great warning in his farewell address was that America should not build a military industrial complex that runs the country to the point of getting us involved in unnecessary wars and putting our democracy at risk. That was like our little lesson. But Eisenhower, it turned out, left us another message which I just discovered literally a couple of years ago, everything you said about this. After World War II, he began to talk to his friends about how hard it was going to be to save American democracy. And he said, I'm really worried about it. He said, we're already the longest lasting continuous democracy in history. But he said, it just requires so much effort for people in their lives. Look at the lives all of you have. He says, it's really hard to keep up with what's going on and to understand what's a real threat and what's not, and to vote to stay the course that the Constitution let out. And he said, I just don't know how long we're going to make it. And so here, I think we ought to say to uh, General Eisenhower, President Eisenhower, we don't know how long we're going to make it either, but we're affixing to lengthen our stay in the land of the free and the home of the brave.